James, James chapter 1, reading from verses 1 up to 19. While we are on the way, nasa train po kami, may, may dalawang uh, kapatiran, I believe sa pananampalataya, because they're talking about, uh, you know, Christian living. Uh, they're quoting scriptures. Magkasama kami ni Mrs. Galing kami ng Lobo. Naguhugot silang dalawa. So, narinig namin yung kanilang usapan. Sabi ng isang kapatid, sabi niya, ang hirap talaga maging kristyano. Kasi pag nagkamali ka, lahat kaagad ng mata nasa sayo. Pero pag hindi ka kristyano, pag nagkamali ka, parang wala lang. O yun yung mga uh, kwentuhan nila. No? And um, sabi naman ng isa, totoo nga, it's only by the grace of God na nandito pa rin tayo naglilingkod sa Panginoon. Sabi niya, marami tayong mga kapatiran, mga baptized, pero wala na sila ngayon. Tayo nandito pa rin. But it's all by God's grace. And totoo po yun. Amen? Amen. It's all by God's grace that we are all here. Serving the Lord together as a church. Amen? As a body, as a group of believers. Mahirap ba talaga sundin ang salita ng Panginoon? Okay? This is um, one thing that we really have to think about this afternoon as God's people. Is it really difficult, okay, to follow God's Word? Well, I understand it's difficult if we are not committed to it. Kapag hindi po tayo committed sa salita ng Panginoon, aba talaga mahirap. Because there are many old ways in our life na talagang hindi uh, kung sa ilonggo pa, balingag. Kung sa Tagalog, baluktot. No? Maraming, maraming mga instructions from the Word of God na hindi uh, ayon no, sa ating mga old ways, no, sa, ating mga, sa ating old life. But once we commit ourselves to the Word of God, God's Word becomes our delight. Amen? Amen? So let's ponder, okay, from the writings of James, this is actually the pastoral appeal of James. By the way, James is the pastor in the church of Jerusalem. And when he wrote this letter, he is making actually an appeal. Meron siyang appeal sa mga scattered believers. Okay? These believers were scattered because of severe persecution. Grabe yung persecution in the church of Jerusalem. And because of that severe persecution, ang mga believers ay uh, pumunta na sa ibang mga provinces, okay, or sa ibang mga lugar. So the challenge for them is how to succeed in a foreign land. Okay, how to succeed in a land where there are so many disadvantages, there are so many restrictions, or there are so many distractions. Can we still succeed even though we are in a foreign land? So, what was the appeal? The appeal is very strong. And that is to remain committed to the truth of God's Word. Amen? To be doers of the Word and not hearers only. Let's all stand as we read the scripture. Okay? James chapter 1. Reading from verses 19 up to 27. Let's read this together. Verse, not, verse 19. Ready? Start. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness 
and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the erupted word, which is able to save your souls. But whoso looketh, okay, all right, all right, verse 22, but be ye doers of a word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man, beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Next verse. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. If any man among you seem to be religious, and widow not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Pastor Albert, will you please lead us in a prayer? Sir. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much, O God, for this uh, great privilege you have given us. Um, thank you, God, for the word that we are about to study. We believe in that you will help us to understand um, from the principle of it, O God, and who and by it, even Lord, we pray that uh, we'll be able to understand and uh, be able to apply it in, in our daily life. This is even, even living God for our future today. And with Him, who oh God is being delivered for us in this message. just want to bring back to you the, the honor and the blessing for what we are about to receive from the same time. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs> Please be seated. The title of our message is Be Doer of the Word. Amen? And not a forgetful hearer. Now, I would like to remind you this afternoon. Nalamig na po ba kayo? Medyo malamig na? Okay, so okay lang or i-adjust natin yung... Okay. O, sige po. So, mag-iakapan na lang kayo dyan. Kung sa lang sobrang lamig na. Okay. Now, I would like to remind you that if your strategy is not biblical, it won't bring success in the end. Are you with me? Kapag yung ating strategy po or methodology natin ay hindi siya biblical, at the end of that, you will fail. Are you with me? Okay. So we need to change in this area. Sabi the scripture in verse 19, Let every man be what? Be swift to hear slow to speak and slow to wrath. Oftentimes, yung approach po natin ay baliktad. Doon po tayo nagsisimula sa likod. Doon po sa may uh, okay? Doon po tayo sa quick to wrath, quick to speak, slow to hear. Di po ba? Okay. So, po yun, yun po yung ating usual na strategy or response uh, sa ating mga situation. But let me remind you, if this is your strategy, at the end, you're going to have more problems. Amen? So, ano po dapat? Sabi ng scripture, dapat, swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to run. Amen? So, we can apply this principle and compare. How many of you who have been in a situation, and this is your strategy, with to wrath, quick to speak, slow to hear. Ano yung resulta? Diba? But when we apply this, swift to hear, slow to speak, uh, speak, slow to wrath, ano po yung result? Mas fruitful, right? Diba? So, here are some few observations from the text. Your severe anger cannot bring you to your goal. Amen? Our severe anger cannot bring you to your goal. And this morning, we have applied this. Oh, oh. Muntik na kami hindi nakaabot ni Mrs. Dito no? sa Hong Kong. But we have applied this principle. 
And we first and thank the Lord, we arrived early. Diba? Okay, now what is righteous indignation? Righteous indignation is simply you are angry because of sin. And you insist to make it right. Okay? Kapag, kapag uh, merong nakagawa sa iyo ng hindi maganda, at yung you know, action na yun ay mali, doon tayo galit na galit. But our desire is to make it right. Amen? Uncontrolled anger will create more uncontrolled actions that you will regret for life. Tama po ba? Amen? Mm. Uncontrolled anger, let's, let's say it together. Uncontrolled anger will create more uncontrolled actions that you will regret for life. Now, in verse 21, it says, So lay apart. Okay? Lay apart. Lay apart what? Lay apart filthiness. Okay? The word filthiness simply means completely dirty words or actions. Okay? Dapat i-lay apart natin. Amen? Okay. Now, what is superfluity? The word superfluity means so super abundant or excessive amount of naughtiness. <laughs> Disobedient or wicked actions. We have to lay that apart. In simple terms, itong mga completely dirty words and actions natin at itong excessive amount of wicked <laughs> actions, kailangan we have to lay it apart. Amen? Huwag po nating dalin, but iwan po natin. Alright? The Apostle Paul uh, put it in another way. We have to put off the old man and put on the new man, which is renewed. Okay? Now, when the Bible tells us in verse 22, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Now, when you humbly receive God's word, it saves you. It makes you fruitful. Notice the word engrafted. Di ba kapag engrafted, meron dito mga may idea sa farming, mas mabilis siyang tumubo at mas mabilis siyang mamunga. Di ba? And that's what the Word of God is telling us, that if we humbly receive the Word of God, then it saves us, okay? And then it makes us become fruitful in our life. It's very clear. So the question is, why we need to apply God's Word? Okay? I believe you have heard this challenge many, many times. And I hope there is a need for us to be reminded. And I believe there is a need for us to be reminded. Because 75% of what we have heard, we can easily forget it after 72 hours. So meaning to say, this lesson, when on, na marinig natin ngayon, kapag hindi po natin in-apply at hindi tayo nagre-record notes or nire-review natin, that's why we are recording it, Okay? And we thank the Lord because we have a team. Nang ginagawa po nila is every Sunday they record our messages and then they will post it in our account para yung hindi po makaka-join sa atin, okay, or kung yung hindi nakaka-absorb man, then they can review the message, okay? That's our goal. So why we need to apply God's Word? The Bible tells us from verses 1 up to 8, the reason why we need to apply God's Word because you can't avoid temptation. Now, I know this is a very strange statement. You can't avoid temptation. Yes, because temptation is inevitable. Okay? What we are being challenged is to overcome temptation. Are you with me? As long as we are still in the flesh, temptation is inevitable. And Satan knows that our weakness is our flesh. Amen? Your weakness and my weakness is our flesh. Now remember, when Satan at attempted Christ, the same thing, yung, yung kanyang approach, di ba? Nung nalaman niya na si Jesus ay gutom because for 40 days and 40 nights na fasting, sabi niya, kung totoo kang Diyos, you turn these stones into bread. 
Di ba? Hindi sila sabi niyo, turn this stone into gold. Kasi di mo naman pwedeng kainin yung gold. Di ba? Sabi niya, you turn this stone into what? Bread. Why? Because during the time, Jesus is physically struggling. Are you with me? But what is the response? Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out from the mouth of God. Now, trials versus temptation. Saan, saan yung gusto mo dito? Pwede ka pastor sa versus na lang. Okay? Now, how can we respond or how can we overcome temptation? How do we respond to trials? Question, why God allows fall? Okay? Bakit? Pwede, pwede Lord, isa lang. Kasi hindi naman, no, Satan cannot tempt us without the Lord's permission. It was very clear from the Word of God because our God is sovereign. Meaning to say, before Satan will tempt you, he have to ask permission from the Heavenly Father. So if you are tempted, it was allowed by God. But why? Okay? Why? To reveal the condition of our heart. Are you with me? God will reward only those who love Him. Because I tell you, loving the Lord, hindi lang sa salita. Are you with me? Loving God is not just standing in front and saying, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. No, no. The Lord sees our heart. Sabi ni James, this is the same tongue that we praise God, but the same tongue that we curse God. Are you with me? So, the Lord is so much interested and He will going to reward those who love Him. That's in verse 12. So you see, God tries our faith to teach us more truths and to prove our commitment. In the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, sabi ng Panginoon, the reason why, sabi niya sa mga Israelites, sa mga Israelites people, the reason why I allow you to pass through the wilderness in order to test you and to prove if you will really follow me from your heart. Wow. Are you with me? Are you still with me? Satan tempts us to put us down. Yun yung goal ng Jablo. Para i-put down niya tayo. Okay? But we have to understand that the Lord has given us all things that we need to overcome temptation. When the Lord allows temptation, it's for, for Satan, it's a demotion because he wants you to he wants to put you down. But for God, that's for your promotion. Amen? Now, so why? Again, why we need to apply God's word to be strong towards various kinds of trials and temptation. Are you trying? Okay? Are you being tried? Kung, kung inaalaw ng Panginoon na tinitest ka ngayon, accept it with joy. Sabi ng text, di ba? Count it all joy. When you fall into various trials, are you tempted? Find strength and answer in God's word. Amen? Now, second, why we need to apply God's word? To avoid the serious consequences of sins. In verses 14 to 16, yun po yung, I believe, yung connection ng ating Sunday school kanina. That our God is just yes. That's why hindi pwede na ang kasalanan walang kabayaran, walang consequence because He is a just God. Alright, so that's why the challenge here in verse 14 is this. But every man is tempted, sabi niya, when he is driven away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust had conceived, conceived, grabe yung term, no? Uh, yung conceive the term ito ay term na very familiar sa ating mga nanay ha? yung kapag nag conceive ka ano po yun? yung pagal na process oh that's a process di ba? that's a process okay when last conceive it bring it forth what? sin and then sin when it is 
finished, complete, it bringeth forth death. That's why sabi niya, do not hear, my beloved brethren. Do not deviate from the true course or from the true aim or purpose. Or do not go astray morally. You see, in order for us to avoid the serious consequences of sin, we should apply God's word. Mahirap po ba? <laughs> Remember, prevention is always better than cure. Okay? Now, in Psalms chapter 119, verse 1 and 3, the Bible tells us, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep His testimonies, that seek Him with a whole heart. They, in verse 3, they also do no iniquity. They walk in His ways. Let's jump in verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? The Bible tells us, by taking it thereto according to thy word. In verse 11, thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. And in verse 12, blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy stages. I hope this is our prayer. Lord, you teach me your stages. You teach me your word, your law. And help me to apply this. You see, because if we apply the word of God, sabi niya, our we will we will remain undefiled on the way. Pag sinabing undefiled, hindi po tayo ma manchahan, di ba? And then we will going to the Bible tells us we will going to do no iniquity, right? Because the, the flesh is so strong. Kaya kung minsan tanongin natin, bakit kaya alam ko na malito, pero nagagawa ko pa rin. Because the flesh is very strong. And the only way for you to overcome, okay, is to apply God's word in your life. Now, what is lacking to us? Ano ba ang kulang sa atin? If any one of you lack wisdom in verse 5, sabi niya, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. But when you ask, sabi niya, but let him ask in faith. And then, nothing what? Wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind tossed to tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. For a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So if we're going to ask ourselves, what is lacking to us? Sabi ni James, wisdom. Okay? Skills, it's not a problem. We have got skills. Kaya nga nandito tayo sa ibang bansa kasi we are skilled workers. Hello, are you with me? Knowledge, marami tayo niyan. Kaya marami tayong power. Okay? Ano kaya yung kulang? What is lacking to us is wisdom. And remember, wisdom is not earthly. Wisdom comes from above. Amen? And wisdom always results to application. Right? And it says, when we ask wisdom, we need to ask Him in faith. Nothing wavering. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable. The Lord don't like His children to be double-minded. Okay? Pag sinabing double-minded ka, yung para madali kang masway, Sa kabila. Dito ba talaga? O dito ba talaga? No? Hindi ka talaga makapag-fix. Ano, no? ano ba talaga? No? Saan ba talaga? Okay. Alright. The third. Why we need to apply God's word? The Bible tells us to enjoy every good and perfect gift of God. Wow. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. 
and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. In verse 18, of his own will begot he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of what? Of first fruits of his creatures. So what is the perfect gift of God for us? Well, we all know that the perfect gift of God for us is His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen? And that He saved us from sin's penalty, that's death, and brought us to a relationship with God. That's the perfect gift of God. Amen? That's why if we have Christ, no? kapag meron tayong Kristo sa ating puso, Diba? Kung si Paul pa, it's nothing to be compared to what achievements I have made in this world. Diba? Why? Because you have Christ, you have everything. Amen? Because Jesus is God's perfect gift. Notice in verse 18, of His own will begot He us with the word of truth. You see, it is God's will for you to be saved. It is God's will for you to be a kind of first fruits. Pag sinabi natin a kind of first fruit, ano ibig sabihin nun? Pag sinabi mong first fruit, ano yon? Fresh. Oh, di ba? Pag yung, pag yung meron kang Fresh. tinanim, Fresh. tapos, namunga, Fresh. and then, excited kang kunin yon pag kagising mo, kinuha na ng iba. Yan sa atin, yun, no? Puso yun sa atin, eh, di ba? Iba ang nagtanim, iba ang kumani. Okay. But a kind of first fruit is this, no, di ba? Ang, yung, yung first fruit na sinasabi, yun yung, yung, yung the best. Di ba? Okay? And the Bible tells us that once we have experienced that salvation, we have received that gift that Jesus Christ, and then He saves us to be a kind of first fruit. Bakit kaya ang term na ginagamit sa scripture, ambassador? You are my ambassador. Aba, hindi basta basta yung ambassador. Diba? Bakit kaya witnesses? Diba? Okay? Bakit kaya sheep hindi goat, no? How many times we've missed God's blessing? How many times you have missed God's blessing? Many times, no? Nalala ko yung, yung uh, ha, nakaroon ako ng counseling one time. Sabi niya, Pastor, alam mo, grabe talaga, ang daming pera dumaan sa kamay ko. Sabi, sabi ko, saan na? Wala na, parang hangin, no? parang bulak. Okay? Meron ako malaking bahay, may swimming pool pa. Bakit anong ginawa mo? Nag-wish lang ako, Pastor, sa Bulalakaw. Okay? Pag-wish sa Bulalakaw, nakapag-asawa siya ng mayaman. Ako, bigla siyang umaman. And then, namatay yung mayaman, wala na rin. Naubos na rin. No? So sabi ko, sa Bulalakaw kasi mag-wish eh. Bakit, bakit di ka mag-wish kay Lord? Amen? Because the Bible tells us the blessing of the Lord, <laughs> The blessing of the Lord, what is this? The blessing of the Lord. Okay, let's read this together. Ready, start. Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow in it. Amen? Nakapag si Lord na bless, walang kasamang sorrow. Are you with me? Every good gift comes from above. Okay? It comes from our Father without shadow of turning. Now notice this, without shadow of turning. Kapag yung blessing daw na binigay ng Panginoon sa atin, kahit shadow, walang, kahit yung shadow, walang turning. <laughs> Tama ba yan? Okay? There is no shadow of turning. It only turns away when we misuse it. So learn to invest or keep investing in God's kingdom work. Amen? Natandaan po natin na kapag tayo ay bilis ng Panginoon, ang purpose niyan, hindi lang para sa ating sarili. Para mas marami pa ang makakilala sa Panginoon. Amen? You know what? This is what the Lord impressed in our heart. No? We prayed, I prayed, sabi ko, 
uh, it, it becomes a part of my goal. Sabi ko kay Lord, sabi ko, Lord, at the age of 14, it is my prayer that I can give my wife, my family, a house. Yun. Hindi naman siguro masama ang desire yun, di ba? Okay? So I prayed for that, no? And the Lord has blessed us. The Lord has given us with a good work. So we started to save some money. So, pag uwi namin sa Pilipinas, you know what? The Lord really provided. But what the Lord impressed in our heart is that not only a house for us, but also for those who need it. Okay? Yeah, right now we are still working on with our refuge house and educational center. Okay? All right, we already started with the first phase. Yun po yung from the inside. Kasi kailangan sa loob mang mauna, no? Okay? So we have now painted all the rooms sa, sa ground floor, saka sa second floor. Okay? Nasend ko na yung bang mga pictures sa iba. Okay? Yun ang, I believe yun ang gusto ng Panginoon sa atin. That when the Lord bless us, hindi lang para sa ating sarili. But let's open our mind and our heart. Lord, you have blessed me. What I am going to do with this? Are you with me? Kasi kung minsan, we are, no? Kapag dumating na yung blessing sa atin, hindi, hindi na natin na ala, na a, a, maala-ala mo kaya. Okay, hindi na natin maalala. Or hindi natin minsan maisip na, Lord, what do you want me to do? This blessing. Yung usual na pumapasok sa ating isip, ay ito yung gagawin ko, ito yung bibirin ko, ito dito ako. Puro na lang sa atin, di ba? Kaya, kaya many times, we miss God's blessing. Okay? But when you let the Lord give you wisdom, Lord, you have given me this, I am just your steward, Lord, bigyan mo ako ng wisdom, paano ko po ito gagamitin that it will become a blessing to my family and to others. Okay? The Bible tells us that the Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. The Word of God. It guides us. Amen? Psalms chapter 119 verse 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In verse 10, it guards us. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I eared not from thy precepts. Sabi ng, sabi ng, sabi ng, sa, ng psalmist, sabi niya, yung kaaway, meron siyang linagay na sa ilunggot to galbog. Sa English, snare. Sa Tagalog, <laughs> patibong. Okay? But sabi niya, Pero sabi niya, hindi po ako nawala sa yung precepts. ba? Okay. Pain, no? The Word of God gladdens us. But in verse 111, Thy testimonies have I taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. Okay? The greatest heritage we can live to our loved ones is our love for God's word. Amen. Amen. That's the greatest heritage. Hindi yun mawawala. Okay? Now, in Joshua chapter 1 in verse 8, ano sabi ni, ni uh, Moses sa ka Joshua? Okay? This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and then observe according to all that is written therein, and then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So if you are aiming for prosperity, it's not wrong. If you're aiming for success, it's not wrong. But what is the key there to reach that? It's the Word of God. Okay? So, last, why we need to apply God's word? To serve with purity of heart in service and Christian living. Notice in verse 26, If any man among you seems to be religious, and bridle not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is what? Verse 27, 
pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself what? Unspotted from the world. Are you religious? If you're religious, please raise your hand. Okay, we have one here. Praise God. Okay. Now, who are not religious here? Just be honest. Now, if you are religious or you, if you are not religious, you are still welcome in RBC. Okay. But I want you to understand that your religion does not get us right with God. It is our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So the question is, it's not if you are religious. The main question is, do you want to get right with God? Okay? Do you want to get right with God? Now, I want you I want to be very clear in this message that our intention here as I bring this point is not to disrespect other religion. That's not the point. But we just want to be honest to the text. Okay? Kasi kapag i-miss natin ito, hindi natin masasavor yung passage ng text. Okay? Now, there are five major religions in the world. What is religion? Religion is man's way to tie people again to God. Yan pong ibig sabihin ng religion. The word religion actually is a combination of two words. Re means again. And lihon means to tie. Are you with me? Are you listening? Okay. So, religion is man's way to tie people again to God. Kasi dahil nga yung ating connection na putol. Di ba? Dahil sa, ano? Sa kasalanan. Yung kasalanan natin, it is our sin that separates us from God. And because of that sin, we were separated from the Lord. So, men have tried to tie that back. Okay? But, the Bible tells us they're all fall short of God's glory. So, now, there are five major religions. Uh, ito po yung Hinduism, considered as the oldest, no? Okay, meron siyang mga one billion followers, the third largest religion. Maraming mga branches, of course, yung Hinduism, okay? And then, the second is Judaism, about 14 million followers. The third Okay, dito po ay by, bueno, by uh, yung first, ito yung pinakamatanda, no? Judaism, Buddhism, with 488 million followers. And then the third is, uh, the fourth here is Catholicism. Okay, traditionally, traditional Christianity with 2. Point billion followers, the largest. And then Islam is 1.5 billion followers, second largest. And there are some studies that in 2025, malampasan ng Islam ang Catholicism. Okay? Now, remember, Jesus did not establish religion. Are you with me? Religion, again, is man's way to bring people back to God. But religion is full short of God's standard. Adam have tried it nung naputol yung kanyang relationship sa Panginoon because of his disobedience, he tried to cover himself. With what? With fig leaves. Di ba? Pero, hindi yun umobra sa Panginoon. Di ba? Anong ginawa ng Panginoon? God himself sacrificed, slaughtered a lamb, and covered him with cold skin. Are you with me? Okay? So, from the very start, Pinakita na ng Panginoon sa atin that our redemption requires sacrifice. Okay? Jesus claimed that we can only have relationship with God the Father through Him. John chapter 14 verse 6. I want you to I want to refresh your memory because I know tomorrow we're gonna go out and have a soul winning, right? John 14 6, the Bible tells us, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through Him. So you see, here's the problem. We are all fall short of God's glory because of sin. All have sinned and come short 
of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. And in chapter 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. You see, it's very clear. You see, the gospel is centered in the person of Christ. That is why Christ's teaching was opposed by the tradi traditions of religious leaders in His time. Diba? Kung, kung pag-aaral natin sa earthly ministry ni Christ, sino yung kalaban, ang kumalaban sa Kanya? Diba mga high priest, mga religious leaders in His time? Read your Bible. Diba mga Pharisees? Diba mga Sadducees? Ano sila? They are the religious people in their time. But why they oppose Christ's ministry? Okay? Why they rejected Christ? Because the teachings of Christ is different from traditions. Rejection of Christ as the Messiah brought spiritual blindness to many. Kaya yun ang sabi ni Paul, di ba sa Romans chapter 10, sabi niya, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God is what? That Israel will be saved. But, the problem is, they have the zeal of God. They are very religious, but not according to knowledge. And they are not willing to submit. Hindi sila, ayaw nilang sumabmit sa pamamaraan ng Diyos. They made their own way. Di ba? They established their own righteousness. And they're not willing to submit into the righteousness of God. So, biblical teaching is the mark of a pure and undefiled religion. The teachings of Christ are pure and undefiled. Jesus Christ built His church. Amen? But sinabi natin church, nowhere you can find that in Christ's earthly ministry, siya ay nagpatayo ng building. Wala. Right? But what we see in Christ's ministry is that He built lives. Amen? So that's why the church is not a building. Kaya, you know what? As a church, Refuge Family, we're so blessed by the Lord kasi naintindihan natin yung concept ng church. Ta, yung, yung church po, hindi yung doon sa Yaumate. Na nawalan tayo ng kwan doon. Ng booking doon. Okay? Yung church po, tayo. Kaya kahit saan tayo, mapabitch man, mapabundok man, mapadito man, na sobrang-sobrang lamig na para makatulog na ang iba dyan. O, diba? Kung, kung wala po kayong tulog at nakatulog kayo dyan, amen for that. Okay? O, ibig sabihin ay anointed yung preaching. <laughs> Kasi nakatulog eh, di ba? Okay. But here's the point, no? I, that I would like that, you see, Jesus built His church, that's Ecclesia in Greek, a called out assembly. It means a group of believers. Believers who are willing to follow the Lord. Okay? These believers were baptized and have covenanted to serve as ambassadors of the soon coming King. Matthew chapter 16 verse 18. Amen? So you see, the mark of New Testament church are clearly evident in the biblical teachings and practices. Kaya nga, make no mistake, no? Uh, hindi ibig sabihin na ang pangalan ng simbahan ay Jesus, the Church of Jesus Christ ay talagang ka Jesus yun, no? Kasi it ne it's never mentioned in the scripture that, that the name of the church will be the mark of the church, of the New Testament church. Wala. Okay, sabihin mo sa akin, ako doon talaga ako doon si church sa, sa Church of Jesus Christ. Kasi nakapangalan talaga, Church of Jesus Christ. Kayo saan kayo? At doon kami sa refuge. Ah, layo nyo. Wala kayo sa pangalan. No? <laughs> Sabihin mo naman, but God is our refuge and strength. Amen. Saan kayo makikita? Psalms 46 verse 1. Oh, Kalimutan na yung ating team verse, di ba? <laughs> Psalms 46 verse 1. Our God is our refuge and strength. Mm. So, kung ikaw ay naghahanap ng isang church, hanapin mo na nagtuturo ng biblical teachings. Because that is the mark of the New Testament church. Amen. Are you with me? I'll Amen. give you a clue. I'll give you a hint. Sino ang founder ng church? Jesus. 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 Sino ang nagturo? Jesus himself. So the disciples were just continuing the things that Jesus taught them. That's why the Holy Spirit was sent kasi makalimutin yung mga disciples. 
and the Holy Spirit will guide them and will teach them all things that they have been taught. Are you with me? Okay. So, Jesus is the very foundation of our salvation. Jesus built lives. And that's why, yun po yung ating goal as a church. Diba? Ang goal natin as a church, the ministry that God has given us is what? It is the ministry of what? Reconciliation. Kasi alam ni Lord, na along the way of your journey, talagang you will be discouraged, you will be disappointed. Okay? Along the way of your Christian journey, ay madidistracted ka. That's why the Lord has given us that ministry of reconciliation, restoration, rebuilding. Amen? Are you with me? Amen. Now, Jesus made it simple for us to understand. Sabi niya, si James, okay? James, if any man among you seem to be religious and brittle not his tongue, but deceive his own heart, this man's religion is vain. O sabi ni James, ganito na lang. Kasi, in the last days, ang dami-dami talagang mga false teachings, false teachers, and if you're not careful, you will be deceived. So sabi niya, ito na lang, para mas simplified na lang. Sabi niya, kung ikaw ay may religion, at yung religion mo hindi makakontrol ng dila mo, your religion is vain. Does it make sense? Yes. But pure and undefiled religion before God the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction, and to give himself unspotted from the world. So you see, vain religion has no power to change your life. Diba? Meron siyang, meron siyang uh, appearance. Okay? Yung religion, meron siyang appearance of spirituality, but there is no power in it. Okay? But pure religion and undefiled before God will move you to serve sacrificially. Imagine this, sabi niya, you visit the fatherless and widows. There's no problem with visiting the home for the aged or the fatherless and the widows. But notice this, in their affliction. Ano ibig sabihin nun? It's a sacrificial kind of service. Amen? Na naglilingkod ka sacrificially. Kasi dapat yun naman talaga, di ba? Pag naglingkod tayo, dapat sacrificial. Right? Kasi pag naglingkod tayo sa Panginoon, without this kind of servant heart, I tell you, masisira yung beauty mo. Madidisappoint ka. Madidiscourage ka. Mm. Totoo po yun. Yeah. That's why we have to we have to be reminded today that you see this is the kind of no uh, ito yung result kapag pure and undefiled yung ating direction patungo sa Panginoon. Sabi niya, it moves you to serve sacrificially and makes you live with purity kasi sabi niya to keep himself unspotted from the world ano yung ibig sabihin nito? okay it simply means that that we are living a Christian life with purity so that's the last point to serve God with purity of heart in service and in Christian living why we need to apply God's word Kasi pag hindi natin i-apply ang God's Word, hindi tayo makakareach sa point of our service na makaka, pag, makakabigay ng kagalakan sa ating Panginoon. Okay? So be ye doers of the Word and not hearers only. Because if you are hearers only, sabi niya, you are just deceiving your own selves. So you see, this is our appeal. Okay, as we close this message, remember it started with an appeal, right? And now, this is the appeal to each and every one of us and to our church, not just to listen, 
not just to study and memorize scriptures. These are all good starting point. Diba? Kapag ikaw po ay nag-start na makinig sa salita ng Panginoon, that's a good start because faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing by the Word of God. And then when you move to studying, ibang usapan na yun. Alright? Diba? Kasi ibig sabihin, you are you are moving forward. No? You, you, you study God's Word. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. And then we keep now we start to memorize scriptures. Amen? Those are great starts. But, most importantly, we have to apply it in our daily lives. So, ito po yung appeal ni Pastor James, the writer of the book of James, sa mga believers na nag-scattered abroad. Ni Tito James. Okay? And what was the appeal again? That we will commit ourselves to apply God's Word in our lives. Let God's Word guide your walk. Amen? Let God's Word guard your actions. Let God's Word gladden your heart. You see, the greatest way to fight discouragement is to let the Word of God be the primary source of your emotions and your actions. Sabi ni John, in 3 John chapter 1 and verse 4, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Sabi na? You know what? This is really what the Lord have nailed in my heart. Pastor Albert is here. Pastor Jubal is here. If you're going to ask pastors, ano, y- ano po yung prayer niyo sa mga members of church? You know what? If you're going to ask, I want to see all of you enjoying the fruit of your labor. I don't want to see you na ikaw ay uwi at for good. Tapos, uwi ka ng luwaan. Yung, I mean, for all the years of sacrifices, just end up in nothing. But I don't want to see that. Yeah. Okay? Gusto ko na marinig na uwi ka na kasi na-reach mo yung goal mo. Amen. 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 And you know what the Lord um, laid it in my heart? That will only be achieved if we are going to love His Word and apply it in our lives. Kaya, pagpasensyaan nyo na po kung yung mga pastors ay patuloy na no? pabalik-balik, apply na naman yan, pastor. Di ba parang narinig ko na yan last year? Imagine, pag nar- alala mo yun last year pa, amen, hindi sabihin na apply mo na. Okay? Na? Well, in fact, I believe I have shared some of this portion sa ating Bible study sa Rantau. But I felt led by the Lord to share it to the congregation again. Okay? Because I believe this is very important for us. Are you discouraged? Are you discouraged today? Are you burdened? Let the Word of God be the primary source of your emotions or even your actions. Amen? Let's walk in the truth. Kasi, no? If we walk in the truth, sa tingin lang mundo, parang talo tayo, no? <laughs> parang lugi tayo, no? Sabi ni Lord, relax lang. Sa uli, sa iyo ang halakha. <laughs> oh, promise ni Lord yan. Di ba? Promise ng Panginoon yan sa atin. So that's why, this is the challenge for us. Be a doer of the word. Amen? Be a doer of the word. There's a song that we're going to uh, share in response to the message. Okay.